What's up everybody? Today I'm going to introduce you to VirtualBox and how to install it on your computer. This is going to be part of a larger series of videos that I create on how to use Linux, different distributions of Linux like Ubuntu, Kali Linux, and others. And the series of videos will be an introduction to using Linux as an alternative to Windows or Mac OS. And if you're interested in becoming a cybersecurity specialist or someone who is interested in learning more about how penetration testing is done, then subscribe to this channel, watch the videos, and let's get started. All right, so VirtualBox is a virtualization application which enables you to run different operating systems on your main computer. So this is advantageous because instead of having to get multiple computers and having a different operating system on each computer, you can have one computer, you download VirtualBox, which is free to use, and then it enables you to run multiple operating systems simultaneously on one computer. This is great if you want to set up a lab environment and if you want to test out different operating systems to see which one suits your needs. All right, so to get started, just go to uh, virtualbox.org and we're going to go to the forward slash wiki forward slash downloads URL. And this is where you can download VirtualBox. So you could download it for Windows, OS 10, and other Linux distributions and Solaris as well. So download the version that makes sense for your operating system, your host system. And then we're also going to get the extension pack. So just download that as well. Once you have them downloaded, just click on the exe file for the VirtualBox installer. And then go through the prompts, click on next. And it'll start the process of downloading and installing VirtualBox on your computer. Once it's done, we can click on finish and we're going to start VirtualBox automatically. All right, so once you start it, we'll get this box over here. So this is the VirtualBox application itself. So it doesn't come with any uh, operating systems installed. And for that, you have to go to another website of the Linux distribution that you want to use. So you can choose to start off with something like Ubuntu. You can choose to start off with um, Kali Linux. And I'm going to go through the process now of installing, downloading, and then installing Kali Linux. So for that, I'm going to go to this website over here. And this is kali.org forward slash downloads. Now, Kali Linux is a penetration testing cybersecurity um, Linux distribution. It comes pre-configured with um, a lot of tools that you would use when you're testing the security of a website, operating system, or things of that nature. Kali Linux is one of the main tools used for cybersecurity and penetration testing. So when you go here, you can download the Kali Linux image, and they already have a version for VirtualBox. So you can scroll down to where it says Download Kali Linux, and then you go to the Kali Virtual Images, click on that one, and then you click on the tab for VirtualBox Images right here. So you would click on the Kali Linux 64-bit virtual box, and it'll start the process of downloading to your computer. It could take a few minutes, so just give it some time. Once it's done downloading, we can go back to the virtual box application. We can go over here to File and Import Appliance. We're going to go to our Downloads folder. We'll import the uh, Kali Linux download that we just downloaded. And then click on Next. You can go to the configuration here and you can see what it's doing by default and then we can customize it later. So we'll just import it. Now it's importing the virtual disk Kali Linux 2017. Let it run its course and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so once you do that, we now have Kali Linux installed in our system and we can take a look at some of the information over here. So we have a base memory of uh, 2048 MBs, we have processors used or two, and we could adjust some of this if we want by going to the settings tab here. You can take a look at some of the information here. Look at the system. If you want to increase the RAM, the base memory, we can do that. And since I have a decent amount of RAM on my computer, I'm going to bring this up to at least uh, 4096 MBs. Processors, I'll leave that at our two processors. For the display, this is the video memory, monitor count, which is using one, scale factor, we'll leave that like that. For the network, it's set up to the NAT network. All right, so the next step is we're gonna install the extension pack. So for that, we'll go to File, Preferences, 
go to extensions we're going to click over here on this uh downward arrow and then we're going to click on the extension pack and then it says you're about to install a virtual box extension pack and this gives it more functionality so we're going to need this so click install I want you to read the terms of use and the license click i agree and then you're going to be installing the extension pack click OK OK and now we could actually start our virtual machine so click make sure you have the uh, Kali Linux um, selected click start and now we see that it's starting the virtual machine we could just uh, click on just hit return or enter you could expand this it'll start the process of um, booting up your Kali Linux distribution and because we downloaded the uh, virtual image from Kali Linux we're able to out of the box use a full screen so this is good to use so by default your username is root and then your password is going to be tor t o o r sign in we could x out of these uh prompts over here and now we have kali linux installed on our computer we have virtualbox and then we have kali linux so one of the first things that i recommend doing is going to your terminal you could expand this if you want and with linux you typically have to use a sudo command with certain distributions of linux um but with kali you don't so we can run a couple of commands straight from here. So I'll run apt get update. Then it'll go through the process of checking to see if there's any updates available. And if so, it'll start downloading it. We could also run our apt get upgrade command. And we got this message over here because most likely if we minimize this. Go over here to show all applications. Go to software. We see that software updates available. So it's recommended that you update all applications and components in your distribution. So restart and install. And this will restart your Kali Linux machine. So as you can see, it's running the updates now. Once you're done, just restart the machine. X out of these again. Log back in. And just to show you a couple of more commands that we could use, I'll go back to the terminal. And from here, we'll do apt get clean. And then we could also add some more commands into one whole entire command list over here. So we'll do the double ampersand. And then apt get update. Again, the double ampersand. Apt get upgrade dash y and then apt get dist dash upgrade and then dash y so just to go over the commands we have the apt dash get clean and apt get apt dash get update and then apt get upgrade dash y and apt get distribution upgrade dash y Gotta make sure we have the G in there. Once you have all that, press enter and it'll start working from the command line here. I'm just running that command. And as you can see, it's starting to make sure everything's set up properly. This might take a while, so just let it run its course. All right, so one, once it's done, I'm gonna clear the screen by pressing Control L. And what that does, it brings you back to the top, but you could scroll backwards if needed. All right, so there's a bunch of commands you could use, all the basic Linux commands like the ls command over here. It'll let you know um, a list of directories or folders that in the current directory that you're in. You can check the current directory by uh, pressing pwd, present working directory. We're in the root. Uh, you could also use ls-l to make it into a list format. It's a little bit easier to read than having it in um in a horizontal view or landscape view. You could change directory by using the cd command and then go into the uh, directory or folder you want to go into. So now we're in there. You can see what's in there. We have nothing there. So you can use all your basic Linux commands. And I'm going to be showing you a bunch of these commands throughout the various videos that we create for this tutorial series on how to use Linux. And again, I'm going to be showing you how to use Kali Linux for penetration testing and cybersecurity purposes. And I'm also going to be showing you how to use Ubuntu for a general use purpose operating system. All right, so we can X out of this for now. And let's take a tour of the various applications that we have. So if you go over here to applications, you have information gathering, you have vulnerability analysis, 
you have the web application analysis. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of tutorials on, on various uh, tools and applications installed in Kali Linux, especially the WP Scan, because this comes built into Kali Linux and it's good if you're going to be testing the security of your WordPress website. Now, thing to note, only test out platforms, websites, or systems that you have express explicit authorization to test. And you should only be testing in your own environment. Only test your websites, only test your computers, uh, create a lab environment if you need. Never use these tools to test out the security or to do penetration testing on a website or computer that you do not have authorization uh, to do so because you can get in trouble. I mean, that is uh, in virtually all countries, it's against the law. So do not test out systems you don't have express written consent to do so. All right. So now we also have the database assessment tools. We have the password attacks. So when you hear about brute force attacks, these are some of the tools that are being used in order to attack um, the login screen and the passwords. Wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and spoofing tools, post exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, social engineering tools, and a bunch of others. You can also see what you have over here, show all applications, and you can see them here. All right, so Kali Linux is a really good operating system for penetration testing. That's the main purpose of it. And I find it useful when I'm testing out my websites and my clients' websites to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So if you want to check out the um, their browser, they're using a Firefox ESR browser. And you can do general purpose type things with um, Kali Linux as well. You can search the internet, go to different websites, you know, and things of that nature. So you could use it for general purposes. It's typically not used uh, for general purposes, but you could. Um, typically people use it just for the penetration testing. And then if they're going to be doing general purpose type stuff, they'll use something different like Ubuntu or another Linux operating system. All right. So this video was just an introduction into installing VirtualBox and installing Kali Linux on your computer. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will be creating more video tutorials on how to use Linux and Kali Linux, you know, for various types of purposes, especially when testing out the security of websites that you own and manage and have express consent to do so. All right, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification icon down below and I will see you next time. Take care.